As I mentioned in the trailer for this video, we're now going to take a close look at how moving a single note line through a chord progression can help you find a richer sounding chord change or something even a little more complex. Okay, we're going to take a uh, blues turnaround as a simple way to apply this. Now you can of course take any melody that you have and uh, using this concept, looking at each note and what value it might have uh, within a chord, um, how that you can then use that note to harmonize and how using some interesting substitutions for the chords can give you both smooth voice leading and some unusual harmonies that might sound tense at the moment but really help resolve. Okay, because more tension is actually a good thing sometimes. So let's come in real close and look at these lines and how we can harmonize them. First of all, I'll play it uh, for you again, um, and a lot more slowly as well. Um, keep an eye on these chord shapes here um, in the left hand. Okay, I'm starting off with this E7 based on, a, on the D7 shape here that's barred and moved up. Okay, then I'm moving to this A7 like this, and then you'll see this um, B7 shape here. Um, that's kind of looks like a clump of fingers, but I'm just letting you know that's that B7. And then there's a shape that moves down parallel here, and I'll talk about that um, as we go through this step by step. So here's the riff again. Okay, I like to pluck this one a little bit harder. I'm doing some thumb picking here in the right hand. It's nice to get a couple of buzzing strings and stuff that gives it a little bit more of that blues vibe. Okay, um, let's start off now um, looking at the melodies. Um, it's sort of like a little call and response thing, typical for blues. Um, here's, we got a melody going down from G sharp to G to F sharp to E, like this. Okay, open E string, and then that echoes here. Okay, and this is down like a sixth from the uh, original there. Um, a B to an A sharp to an A to a G sharp, which is trilled from the G, um, which gives you that major minor duality, which is typical to the blues. Okay. Um, if you were to play these two lines together, you actually get those um, sixth uh, kind of intervals here, which sound pretty cool too. All right, that's also, um, if you were using it as a simple lick, that's one that you should of course have in your vocabulary. But we're going to harmonize these separately, okay? So um, it's important to know the notes of the chords. First of all, we need a, a palette of chords to choose from. We know we're in E here. You can hear that resolution to E there very clearly. All right, so we're in E and it's a blues. So um, for the turnaround, our vocabulary of chords to use will be um, either uh, E7, A7, or B7, okay? All seventh chords based on major triads and um, uh, dominant seventh chords based on major triads. And that's uh, typical of the blues. They're all dominant sevenths, okay? Um, so then we look at, uh, start off simply looking at the first note, all right? Um, and we're gonna think about what chord um, out of those has a G sharp in it. And it just so happens that the only chord in, um, uh, out of E7, A7, and B7 that has a G sharp in it is E7, okay? So um, the other, Chords don't even have that in there. So we'll start with um, this E7 shape based on, right, based on this basic D7 moved up and barred. Okay, you should recognize that by now. All right, and I chose that voicing because uh, it gets all these notes in here in a, in a close way. Okay, it um, doesn't stretch it out. It's not just a straight E major like here. Okay, it gets our E7 going and um, leave space to move closely to other voicings we know. Okay, um, let's start with this. Um, first, the open low E string. All right, and I was going to the octave here. Okay, then I threw the third of the um, E major chord into the bass here, and that's a typical move to get us up to the four chord, all right? Um, and that's, we'll see why I, I chose that. We're going to um, next to the four chord. So here we go like this. Okay, plucking that octave again there. All 
right? The next note is a G, and that's um, also only that only appears in an A seventh chord um, within those choice of chords. It's not in a B seven. It's not in a G seven. Uh, excuse me, not in a B seven. Not in an E seven. Getting a little tongue tied here. Um, okay, so that's a perfect voicing for the situation. All right. So we moved from here. Okay, and I just again alternating that thumb there. All right, and then climbing up. All right, through a half step approach to the B. All right, and that's because this note here, um, an F sharp, also only appears in a B7 chord. It's not in an E7. It's not in an A7. It could be in an E9, but we're not using ninth chords here. It also um, makes more sense to be part of a B7 because our turnaround, we had an E7 to A7, right? One to four to five to one. Okay, and that high E note is an obvious candidate to be harmonized with a straight up E chord. Okay, so here's our basic motion E7, A7, B7, E7. Uh, e7. Okay, and uh, again, just that picking pattern. So that takes us through the first half of the turnaround. For the second half, we come down from a B to an A sharp to an A to a G sharp with that trill from the G to land again on an E chord, all right? Now we're gonna take a slightly different approach for the second half here um, to keep it from being just such a straight up uh, blocky E7 to A7 to B7 and then ending on an E7 and do that again. We're gonna create what's called a back cycle here, all right? And um, to create a back cycle, what you need to do is just um, sort of look at your your melody in reverse, okay? Look at the sequence of chords in reverse and look at where you want to get to, okay? We want to get to an E, really an E7. Okay, I'm ending like that. All right, putting down that little finger on the D there. So it is ending on an E7. But um, that's neither here nor there. We need to know where we're coming from in order to create the back cycle, okay? So the E is the goal. To get to an E, we need to use its five of, all right? You, you can do other things in a back cycle, including substitutions, which we're going to do a little bit here, but the real basis of it is um, a sequence of five of chords, okay? So the five of E is B7, okay? Then we need to think back. The five of B7 is F sharp seven, okay? What's the five of F sharp seven? That's C sharp seven, okay? So we have four notes to harmonize here, okay? And now we've got four different chords. We've got the E, which is preceded by a B7, which is preceded by an F sharp seven, which is preceded by a C sharp seven. Okay, now let's play them in this in the descending order, okay? And that'll be C sharp to, I'm gonna use this fragment now, F sharp seven, B7 to E7. Okay, let me play that one more time. Okay, now you can hear the melody actually coming out of that. Okay? And that's the strength of these back cycles. They have these chromatic motions in there, okay? And that's what we're using now to harmonize this melody. All right? So, um, to make this a little bit more interesting, instead of this sort of blocky jump like this, we're going to change it up just a little bit more. Now, first of all, I was, um, okay, playing off the open B string as well um, when I was picking it, okay, which adds, which adds a cool shimmer to the sound, okay, that's just a nice um, guitar player's trick to add in there, okay, um, and now what we're going to also do is create a very smooth bass line um, now that we have the, the block of chords uh, going, we're going to use this bass line here, It's a very strong motion. And that second note has a particular dissonance to it that's nice in this. Okay. Again, a chromatic motion like that always uh, works very nicely. And this is actually, in a way, also an echo of what the high melody did just a second ago. So there's a lot of symmetry going on in here. Um, let me play it one more time just to refresh your ears while we're in the middle of this here. Here we are. 
are now we're coming down here so we're just going to substitute out the lowest notes of um, this chord progression the back cycle um, for these e. okay so we take C sharp and put that G sharp in the bass now that's a valid chord that just puts the fifth in the bass that's no problem at all then we move down here okay now what's up with this chord here that's an interesting thing that's going on F sharp okay seventh would that would be the fragment we know here okay this is just using that um, raised root kind of idea which is simply um, making this chord sort of represent a uh, fully diminished seventh chord a half step above the root of the seventh chord here now we've talked about that in other sections on the DVD and that's always an, a perfectly viable um, substitution for a chord okay it just creates a very active sound um, all right any dominant seventh chord you can substitute any of these fully diminished seventh chords okay right um, that are minor thirds away okay you can hear how that works all right so coming here And here the B7, again, just with the fifth in the bass. All right, we're landing down on that E. Okay, so creates very strong parallel motion. Nice dissonance there. B7 and end on the E. And make it an E7 again for the end of a blues. I'm just going to play this one more time so that you can hear how it goes together again.